PC storage has changed a lot over the last decade. Hard drives and solid state drives come in a variety of physical sizes, storage capacities, and speeds. While some drive types are best suited for certain applications, there is no one drive that fits all situations. Now let's take a look at different storage options and use cases. So first and foremost, what is a storage drive? Well, this is where your PC keeps all of your data stored in zeros and ones. This is where your operating system runs, where your games run from, where you keep all of your photos and all of your videos. If the CPU is the brain of the PC, this is what the brain is thinking about. All storage types are considered non-volatile memory, meaning the data that is stored is not lost when there's no power to the device. On the other end, there's volatile memory, which is commonly known as RAM, which loses data when power is removed. The most common storage option is the traditional hard drive, or HDD, which stands for hard disk drives. These are mechanical drives that feature intricate parts such as the platter, the spindle, the read-write arm, and the actuator. The platter is a circular disk where the bits of data written as ones and zeros are stored. These platter disks have magnetic surfaces that allow the read-write arm to magnetically charge regions of the platter. HDD technology has advanced to the point of having multiple platters and increased storage densities on the platters, which gives us hard drives with capacities of 20 terabytes and more. While they have increased in size, they are also falling in price, with 8 terabyte options available under $200. With the massive storage capacities and great dollar to terabyte value, HDDs would seem like the best option for storage, but their biggest disadvantage is speed. Most hard drives average anywhere from 30 megabytes a second to 150 megabytes a second, depending on the file type and size. There's several different factors that can affect that speed, such as the RPM of the drive. This is the rotations per minute of the platters, with the two most common speeds at 5400 RPM and 7200 RPM. The faster the RPM, the faster the data is being read by the read-write arm as the platter spins. Another factor is the hard drive disk cache, also known as the disk buffer or cache buffer. This is temporary data storage built into the controller of the drive that acts as a sort of RAM for that drive. This cache size can vary, but many drives have a cache of 256 megabytes. This type of memory is much faster and more responsive than the mechanical hard drive. So small files to your hard drive will transfer at speeds that will seem instantaneous. Once you start moving files larger than the 256 megabyte cache size, you'll see the transfer speed drop to normal write speeds that are limited by the spinning platter and read-write arm. Hard drives use a SATA connection, or Serial Advanced Technology Attachment. This connection uses a SATA cable to connect the hard drive to the SATA connection on the motherboard. Current hard drives use SATA 3.0, which has speeds up to 6 gigabits per second. But with all the limiting speed factors, hard drives will never saturate that bandwidth. Now we'll look at solid state drives, or SSDs, specifically the 2.5 inch form factor drives. These drives are non-mechanical, meaning they have no moving parts and they're made up of two main components, the NAND flash memory chips and the flash controller. The NAND flash memory is comprised of small cells that hold an electrical charge. Any cell with a charge is designated as a 1, and any cell with no charge is designated as a 0. These electrical charges can be held even when the SSD is powered off, making this a non-volatile memory as well. The flash controller communicates with the PC and it's responsible for the read-write caching, managing the file system directory, error correction, and it basically runs the SSD. The SSD has a very fast read-write speed, with some up to 500 megabytes per second, which is several times faster than the 150 megabytes per second of the traditional hard drives. The 2.5-inch form factor has been around for over two decades, with an introduction with PETA interfaces in 1998. In the late 2000s, SATA SSDs were being mass-produced, but were very expensive with very small storage capacities, such as 128 gigabytes or 256 gigabytes. Today, the 2.5-inch SSD has come down in cost, with capacities of one terabyte less than $60, depending on the speeds and capacities of two terabytes 
4 terabytes, and 8 terabytes. As flash memory gets smaller, the 2.5 inch form factor will be able to get larger and larger storage capacities. With faster read-write speeds, SSDs are great for running the operating system of your PC for extremely fast start times, running games for quick load times, and working with any large video or other files that need that read-write bandwidth and speed. Since the 2.5-inch form factor is smaller than the 3.5-inch hard drives, you can fit more drives into your PC. With no mechanical parts, it can be mounted in any orientation, and it's not sensitive to movement like a mechanical drive would be, so it's great for laptops and mobile devices. All in all, it sounds like this is the perfect all-around storage solution. But there is one downside. While a traditional hard drive disk can technically have a long lifespan, depending on the mechanics of the drive staying intact, the SSD has a limited number of writes to each cell. Each 2.5-inch SSD will have a TBW rating, or total bytes written. A 1TB SSD with a 360 TBW rating will be able to write 360 terabytes of data before it will no longer be able to write to the cells. That does sound like an awful lot of data to be written, but depending on your use case, you can burn through those write cycles very quickly. Either way, the average 2.5-inch SSD will last you a long time for average PC usage, but it's always recommended to have your data backed up to a hard drive disk as well. There are programs like Crystal Disk Info that can help you monitor how much data has been written to your SSD, and it'll help you keep an eye on the health of your drive. A newer form of SSD that you may already be using is the NVMe M.2 SSD. NVMe stands for Non-Volatile Memory Express, and it uses PCIe instead of SATA in your PC. In your PC, there's lanes which connect any interface with the rest of the PC. SATA uses one lane for data to transmit back and forth. With NVMe, you have four lanes on PCIe available, with four times as much bandwidth for data to transmit back and forth. This is where NVMe drives get their biggest advantage over 2.5-inch SSDs. They can have extremely fast read and write speeds, as opposed to the 500 megabytes per second of the 2.5-inch SSD. NVMe refers to the connection, but the M.2 refers to the form factor. This is a 2280 M.2 NVMe drive, and you can see this thing is tiny. The 2280 refers to the form factor of the drive, 22 millimeters by 80 millimeters. This comes in other form factors as well, such as 2230, 2242, 2260, and the 2280. This allows for very fast storage for a wide range of devices such as your PC, laptop, or even mobile gaming devices like the Lenovo Legion Go. You can find drives ranging in size from 1TB to 8TB. The price of NVMe M.2 drives has been falling rapidly, with 1TB options ranging from $50 to $100, depending on the speeds of the drive. NVMe M.2 drives are practically the standard for most PC builds for running the operating system, games, and general storage. Most motherboards can support multiple M.2 drives, so you can fit a lot of fast storage with a very small footprint. These drives have similar total bytes written ratings as 2.5-inch SSDs, so there is a limit to how much can be written onto these drives, though you'll most likely upgrade to a new device in several years, long before you burn out an SSD. We've looked at the many different hard drive and solid-state drive options, but which one is best suited for you? Well, the answer is, it depends. There's a lot of factors to consider when it comes to making a decision on what hard drive to use. The vast majority of new PCs on the market will be using some form of solid state drives for the main operating system and storage, with options for 2.5 inch or NVMe. This has become standard on many devices for its speed, lack of mechanical parts, and lightweight form factors. Odds are, you're using a device with an SSD at this moment. Even with a cap on how many writes can be written to an SSD, they have become standard for storage. If you're using your PC for gaming, then an NVMe SSD will make the most sense for you instead of a 2.5-inch SSD. You'll get the best performance, and you can have enough storage available for many of your games. Modern games take advantage of the four lanes and the read and write speeds of the NVMe SSDs for seamless load times and texture loading, and the price per gigabyte is easily affordable for any gamer on a budget. 
With modern laptops, NVMe SSDs have become standard for their small form factor and allowing for much lighter laptops. 2.5-inch SSDs are still very useful for upgrading older laptops that use 2.5-inch HDDs, which are slower 5400 RPM hard disk drives in the 2.5-inch form factor. These laptops are generally older, so they do not have a connection for NVMe drives, but you can easily breathe new life into the device with a 2.5-inch SSD, giving instantaneous boot times and general improved performance. This will also work for any older PC that doesn't have an NVMe connection on the motherboard, but it will have SATA connections. If you like making your devices last as long as possible, then a 2.5-inch SSD would be perfect for you. 2.5-inch SSDs are also ideal for running many drives in your PC, with some cases fitting up to eight 2.5-inch SSDs or more. You can have them all running to the motherboard and using only one lane each, as opposed to the four lanes required by NVMe drives. Hard disk drives still have a place in the world, especially for long-term storage. They've fallen in price considerably, and you can get a large capacity hard drive for a reasonable price allowing you to have storage for all of your files. If you're a content creator and you want to back up your massive library of photos or videos, then you'll need the large capacity. Typically, when I'm editing a video, I'll keep the footage and the project on a faster SSD and then move everything to an HDD to archive when I'm done with the project, freeing up space for other projects on the SSD where I'll need the speed. Each storage type has its advantages and disadvantages, but the capacities of drives of all types are getting larger every year, and drives are getting better and better. Remember, you can stop by your local micro center and talk to one of our associates to ask about what drive would best suit your needs. And if you made it this far in the video, remember to comment, hashtag, I want a micro center near me.